how much time do you put into making the, those pages? Probably about six to eight hours a day. I think it's been for a while. But is it like you have to do it every day though? Well, it's not like I have to. It's really more like um, I really love to do it. So it's really exciting for me to do and I, there's not much else I'd rather do. I actually read an article in the newspaper that said uh, the web is cool in 1993 and in December of 1993 I went on the web and I was like this is very cool. There was stuff that was so silly really that was not bold or um, it wasn't like uh, for, to make money or it wasn't you know explicitly meant for people but it was home pages, early home pages where people were saying I like my dog, here's a picture of the dog. And you're like, why should I care that you have a dog? But then I realized, well, I can, I can write about my important stuff too. I don't have a dog, but I could write about, you know, my cat, or I could write about my dad, or I could write about, you know, whatever I wanted to. It's an open space. Just because I write about it on the web doesn't mean I expect people to read it. I mean, in some way, it's a um, gift. It's a gift that people give me by reading it. I'm lucky that they read it. There's no reason why anyone should read it. It doesn't make any sense. Why would they bother reading some random dude's personal information? Now, maybe if your dad also died, you'd read it. You know, and then it's then it's a connection. Then it's like someone else's dad died. Because I've met so few other people who had the same circumstances of fatherhood that I did that it's exciting when I can read their accounts or to establish communication with them. So that's those are the people that I expect to find by doing that. But other people who are like, I can't believe you wrote all this personal information. Well, I can't believe you read it. I mean, you know, it's just personal. Everybody's got their personal information. Why bother with mine? You can make a web page and somebody will find it. You may not find it today or tomorrow, but in a year, you'll get some random email from some person who'll be really close to your vision of the world or your experience or radically different. But that's really astounding thing. So I really love that feeling of making those random connections in the global brain or whatever you call it. find a lot of old people in this country are starting to go, I don't know how it is in, in your country, do you know? I mean, a lot of old people here are finding, to, you know, like talk about bridge or, you know, life or kids or whatever, tell stories. Old people have so many stories, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I would love if my grandpa had a web page. Yeah. I'd love to go read his stories. I have to go visit him in the, a different part of the country now, but if he had a web page, you know. Yeah. <laughs> You got robbed. Yeah, it was bummer. We come home and it's 11 o'clock at night and my girlfriend and I each have our little laptop in our backpack and some we're coming home from the train, it's like midnight and uh, some guy runs up with a gun and shows me his gun and says, you know, shut up and cool it, you know, give me everything. And I was like, this really sucks, can I have my driver's license so I don't <laughs> have to get a new one? And he was like, shut up. And he took us into this like vacant lot closed the fence and like told us not to look at them and took off our backpacks and ran away. I don't know if they knew what to do with the computers, you know? I hope they did. Someone told, one of my friends said, maybe you helped one of these kids get a web page. You know, he got your computer and all the web stuff was on there. So he like went ahead and made himself a web page and that'd be cool. I mean, if he made a web page, I'd, I'd read it. Yo, hey yo, check it out now. Yo, hey yo, check it out. Yo, hey yo, check it out now. Yo, hey yo, check it out. Yeah, I like stories from the life when they happen to you, you know? Bad, oh yeah, that's stuff, yeah. yeah. Bad stories, all, bad things that happen to you always turns out to be the good stories, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. That's what, um, that's very much what the web is like too. I think that 
one of the reasons I've had success with my web page is because I enjoy or I'm stimulated by talking about things that are difficult, uh, death or uh, sex or you know what I mean, the stuff that's really intense and um, you know that, that that's difficult stuff to talk about. Not a lot of people want to share it and they don't always want to share it with a stranger you know or anybody who would be surfing the web but you know those are the stories that we read and we're like wow. But if we, write, if we can write about those things online then we, then we can uh, find out that, oh, this happens to everybody. You know? And yeah. maybe, well, I mean, the dream scenario is that, um, I'll give you some onions too. You want onions? Sure. Okay. Um, the dream scenario is that the, the robbers would read it. The robbers would get on the web somehow and read it and say, wow, that really sucked for that guy. Maybe I shouldn't rob him again. <laughs> but I, that's probably a little, na that's probably yeah. mostly naive to think so. Yo, hey, yo, check it out, gal. Pretty good. Yeah. Good chat. Yeah. yeah. No, thanks. So is the recipe coming on web? <laughs> I did a piece about toilets in Sweden. You did? Yeah, you guys have crazy toilets. Because the, the distance between where your butt is and where the water is is very far. That's strange, because I think you got crazy toilets. Why you have, do we you have, 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 have a big old pool, like down there. So, you guys you know. have water conservation. You use far less water. Yeah, but you do a lot of thinking, don't you? You're a thinking person. I don't know. Isn't everyone? Yeah, a lot of people. But you think, it feels like you think a lot more than like the next person. Well. Because you have theories about everything. If I say sausage, you have, you have a theory about that. And if I say orange juice, you, I mean, you sure thought about that somewhere. You probably wrote it on your, the orange day on, your, on the web. Well, that's, what, that's what's wonderful about the web is that it can absorb all of that. Yeah. And there's parts of my website that people never read because who cares? It's, it's a theory on something that no one ever cares about. But I can still write it and it's fun to build the structure because the more theories you have, the more kind of interlocked little pieces you can make, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Oh, I love it. One thing I loved about your toilets is that you could choose to flush a little water or a lot of water. Here, you gotta do like the whole like eight gallons yeah. all at once or none, you know what yeah. I mean? imagine asking people to pay to read poems that I wrote about my dad. You know what I mean? Like, I'm so honored that someone would want to read it. You know what I mean? Like, poem is such a personal thing and such a useless thing, you know, that... But people charge, uh, you, if you want to buy a book, you pay for it. Yeah, but, it's nothing but, but that's that. because it costs money to make paper. I mean, I would make this anyway, even if the people didn't read it. If they read it, I'm happy. So I make, my, I make money doing other things. My brother says to me, my brother works on Wall Street in New York, and he says, Justin, man, everybody's getting rich off the internet. What about you? You know, what's your deal? But um, it's, not, it's not the business I'm in. I mean, it's not what I do. If I, I don't have ideas like how to make a million bucks in a week, you know. I, um, and I don't... I don't have the, I'm t I don't know, I just, I, I can't pay my credit card bills on time. Even if I have enough money, I'm just too, I, I can't get it all together. Let alone, let alone like take loans and start a business. And this is Justin. going to do this feature report on Justin Hall, but there's what is nothing there left to know. I know that I can't tell my audience anything that they don't already know. Well, you could own. get a, a, a shot of that painting. You could get a shot of that painting. Of, uh, that's a painting that my friend Carew did, and I think it's a brilliant painting. If you look at the, the, the screens, 
and the, the windows, I think it, it says a lot about, you know, what could happen and what the vision could be down the road for computers and I don't know, I don't want to get too literal with it, but anyway, you know, that's what you get by coming here. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> The power to make our imaginations real in the computer is um, a very exciting thing, but I think there's very severe prices. For me, it's been a, it's damaged my hands, so it's hard for me to uh, it's hard for me to keep up with the rate that I had before, and it's hard for me to do some other things. Also, I just don't go outside very much because I'm so excited to do things that are indoors, and I live in a beautiful place in the world, and I don't know very much about it. I don't know my neighbors very well um, and I never I really haven't in many years since I was a child known my neighbors very well because what I do is it keeps me inside my home and I don't see very many people that way on the other hand I have neighbors in Sweden because I work on the computer so it's a trade-off <laughs> It could be a situation where all the people who have computers and love computers make little fortresses out of their homes and don't leave them. I mean, in this neighborhood, there's places you can live where you, you have a button to open a gate and you drive in the gate and the gate closes and you go to your house and you never have to worry about coming in contact with anybody who lived in the neighborhood before you got there. And those people are computer users, they're young. I mean, those places are expensive. The way they afford them is because they work in the exciting new computer field. And so they live in these fortress homes with great computers, connections to the internet, cable TV, and they don't know their neighbors. So are we going to look back in 50 years and say, we really created a world where you can't walk out of your home because nobody knows anybody and everybody's ready to steal from somebody else so they can afford more exciting goods? That would be a really unhappy world to live in. Am I contributing to the creation of that world by making web pages and teaching people how to make web pages and talking about the web? Probably, but I have, um, I don't know, it's like I have to do what I like to do. The alternative would be to spend, sit in my house and just think all the time. Are we creating a world? Is this happening? Is it? And you kind of have to go through with it and see what comes of it. And then if it sucks, we'll create something better. Uh, I've got a friend in Copenhagen who has a school and said I could be a teacher there. So maybe I'll teach in Copenhagen for three months. Or maybe when she, she's going to graduate school in a year and we'll go to New York. Or we'll go to New Orleans. Or we'll go to Thailand. Or who knows where we'll end up. Um, Except supposedly in Denmark there are busty blondes walking the streets every day. Is that what they say? Well, that's what a friend of mine just wrote to me in the email. So that, see, so maybe we'll go to, we'll, we'll probably go there then. He doesn't move very much from that desk most of the day. So I'll go out and do errands or go to work and I'll come back and he'll be there. And just like a little puppy, he'll come around the desk and greet me when I come in the door and then he'll go back to the desk. And then whenever I want a piece of him, I just come over and kiss his neck when he's working at the computer. And then I go over and I do something else. But he's always stay, I have a built-in boyfriend. Is that the way you make your, mostly your social contacts through the web also? Mm. Do you meet, actually meet people? Um, yeah, I think I... Hmm. Well, it's like the web has become so much a part of my life that I go to a party. I go to parties now and people are there that I've met through the web. Or there are people that I met in real life, but we met at a job where we were working on the web. Or there's the web at the party and people are surfing the web. Um, I remember like two or three weeks ago I went to a party and in the corner there was a laptop with a wireless modem on it and they had uh, they were looking at another party that was happening <laughs> somewhere else in the city. 
So we were at one party looking at a live broadcast from another party to see whether it was worth going to. That was pretty wild. What is this bud? Bud.com. Um, oh, bud.com is a is a site that I thought, okay, I want to have a I have this great domain because I registered in '94 when you could get things that were cute and short and with, when nobody else had them, and uh, uh, I thought to myself, I've always run into this where I want to write about my friends, but I don't want to speak for them. That it's difficult to speak for them. That's problematic. So why don't I get a place where I can publish my friends because my friends are so crazy. I want to build a place that I would want to read, which means it turns over very often. It reflects culture from Sweden, from America, from Japan, black culture, white culture, Hispanic culture. It's got, it's got everything that you know is out there, and it, but it just changes all the time. If it's not good, it turns over quick, so something else is up there. But you just get a chance to experiment with a lot of stuff that way. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Okay, okay, that's it.